The only South African song, apart from Safina, that I know is the Sia Bonga Yesu. You don't know that. So, so is that stop, why stop, you were dancing stop. off beats because you were singing yeah, that I'm in your mind? Yeah, I'm singing a different song. Oh, right, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is an awful attempt to sing this morning. <laughs> anyway, your talents are not in singing. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, your anyway. progress. <laughs> um, anyway, nonetheless, headlines. Hmm. That started with the Gold Street business. More than half of government revenue going into debt service reaches 51.2% of public revenue. Tension hits Ghanaian currency merchandise traders as they await U.S. response to Yuan's uh, depreciation. Last hour on the front page of the Gold Street business, Ghana moves to capture opportunities created in U.S.-China trade war, war escalation, following Chinese ban on agri produce from the U.S. Now, the Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning, Nam one release from police custody and VIP opens world business uh, investment forum here in Accra. And there's one about two females win the presidential pitch. And there is a marvelous thing with having to develop their own Ghana-made sanitary pads. And you need to know that it's from plantain, banana, stems, and very natural stuff. It's a very wonderful invention that we should be very impressed with in these times. Remember, the number one story is on the front page of the Daily Guide, except with a variant of a headline, which is number one bill times change. It was on the basis of the change that he was <laughs> released. Court remands policewoman killers. Defense minister launches two games for veterans. The last story on the front page of the Daily Guide newspaper. More dead bodies found in Takra. The Engana introduces 48-page passport booklet. I hope that we won't run out of booklets to print the passports. <laughs> now, the today is reporting this morning. VAG Lotto Super 6 jackpot launched. There's one about CRM model will cause unemployment. And Canada Japan is descending on Prophet Bedou Kobi. That's on the front page of the Today too. The Ghanaian Observer, Apo shoots down Oye Lisa in hot Adenta NDC parliamentary race. Number one three is here. Ghana has a business-oriented mindset. Ayoko clears air over Oslo Chancery property. And Ayoko is the foreign minister. Now, the new crusading guide is reporting this morning that property for Oslo Chancellor is still under consideration. This is according to the new crusading guide, and that's the foreign minister speaking there. And there's one about it's our turn to choose the government chair, the Abola. PM declares to the Great Aka Regional House of Chief. In fact, they are telling them that it's our time now. Mm. The Daily Statesman newspaper, more bank debt to be settled by end of August. Ghana to regulate recruitment to the Gulf. 2.75 billion saved in three years. Review of NDC contracts helping to recoup taxpayers' money. Now, the final is reporting this morning. The Vice President opening that particular business forum is there. Ghana to introduce 48 paid passport this year for you and the Nimwa that travel consistently all over the place and all of that. He clearly will be happy about you, mean Kofiansa. I, I, yeah, I meant yourself and Nimwa. Why do you want to okay. draw in other parts? <laughs> 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 and increasing consumer based taxes is wrong. The IEA is the one saying so, and the invention that's got in the presidential page is on the front page of the find out team. The Daily Graphic newspaper is my last paper. Police find another skeleton in Takradi. Panelists advocate equity fund for SMEs. They are not dead. Families of missing Takradi girls declare we've done nothing illegal. PDSA in back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Housing minister tells facilities in Accra. PBC workers picket company headquarters. Now, the Chronicle is reporting this morning why your street lights are not functioning. Should we pay more? That's the editorial that you read on the front page too. But there's another story about medical doctors demanding that prostitution is legalized. That argument will be canvassed by yours truly later on in this particular show. But yes, we can't wait to hear yours truly canvass the argument. <laughs> Against it. Meet <laughs> you <laughs> not. The uh, NLA VAT collaboration, and that's on the front page of the Chronicle too. Let's catch a flight to Takradi this morning, shall we? Where the police forensic um, experts say they have uncovered yet another body. Number four. Number four In yeah. their search for information and clues that may lead to unraveling the mystery surrounding the missing, the three missing Takradi girls, the police have found yet another body. Now, we know that on Friday they found three bodies, 
in Takradi. And these three bodies were found in a cesspit that serves a house in which the key suspect in this in this in this offense, uh, Yudo Tok Will, I struggle to mention his name, mm. Wills. This is a house in which he lived. He rented a single room in this a uh, single room apartment in this house. The cesspit that serves this house. It was from that cesspit that the three bodies, the three remains were found. Now they found another body. This time, this is found in yet another building which is connected to this suspect. Now this suspect, after he was arrested by the police initially and granted bail, he jumped bail. And when he jumped bail, he went to hide in an uncompleted building. The police found him from that uncompleted building. Now, following last week's discovery of the body of the remains in that cesspit, they decided to go back to that uncompleted building from which they arrested him when he jumped bail. Now, it was in that uncompleted building that the police found yet another body part. And a source is telling, a source told the Daily Graphic newspaper that I must say that where the current body was discovered was the same place where the dress the headgear and the rubber slippers the third victim wore when she was kidnapped were also found. Quite curious clues, Andy, that this same uncompleted building where this suspect was subsequently arrested after he jumped bail was where they found this body. That place was also where they found the headgear and the dress and the rubber slippers of one of the victims, one of the three ladies, that those were the things that the family said she wore out of the house. And it was in this uncompleted building that they found those items. Mm -hmm. So the police are still conducting their forensic, um, forensic investigations. The police have said that there was one family that reported a missing granddaughter. So they have reached that family, suspecting that this fourth body may be the, the parts of that girl she is ruth abaka because it was her grandparents that reported her missing some time back the police suspect that this fourth body may be that girl so they've contacted the family as part of their investigations right um i mean this story is harrowing on on all mm. levels yeah. and now the introduction of a fourth you know of a fourth victim um who we possibly were not as aware about um yes. as we but were. the three but the families of the three girls still believe that they insist that their 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 girls are still alive that nothing has happened to them i mean of the course police themselves of course they have to keep hope keep alive hope, yeah. in fact the whole nation is keeping hope alive and the yeah. police themselves have indicated that what they have found is not conclusive enough for anybody to jump to any conclusions of course, of they have course. to do the dna test that they are conducting in order to conclusively state whether or not mm. these parts that they retrieve from the suspect have anything to do with any or all well we, we wait with hope um for for these dna results and i, I guess we're all hoping that i, said that I can't not. help you but say that the police should stop clarifying needless points on this particular matter for example when they tell us that oh it was not any tip from the gentleman that got to the ear it was our then, like does it, it even matter it, yeah I mean, the most important I, I thing is we that want them morning. focused yeah. and i'm being charitable this morning mm. anyway now and they should do their things out yeah. of the public's eye Just give us results stop say this anyway you are about to make the case against... <laughs> no. Against. Okay. So a medical doctor uh -huh. who is actually uh, a gynecologist, he's saying that he's at the Confederate Teaching Hospital. His name is Dr. Ernest Kwako. He's actually saying that for Ghana to deal with the issue of prostitution properly, mm -hmm. we need to regularize it. Okay. Don't make it illegal. Currently, the law, specifically Section 274 of the Criminal Offenses Act states that persons trading in prostitution in fact it says that if any person who knowingly lives wholly or in part on the earnings of prostitution or is proved to have for the purpose of gain exercise control direction or influence over the movements of a prostitute in such manner as to aid abet or compel the prostitute um, with any person or generally shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and where a person is proved to live or with the habitual uh, company of a prostitute is proved to have exercise control, the person shall equally be deemed to have been in. So it's an offense in this republic to be a prostitute, live in that capacity, mm -hmm. and live on the earnings of a prostitute in this particular case. I don't know, how do you call the people who live on the earnings of the prostitute? <laughs> Not kids, the elderly people. Uh, 
Well, well, there's there's pimps, those who who um, organize yes, them. Yes, and, and yes, yes, that them, is yeah. the appropriate and technology yes. I was looking for. Yeah. You know, I mean, here we call prostitutes different names. Mm-hmm. Some call them tutu. Mm-hmm. I know where the tutu is from, right? No, I don't. The time, you know, up until the 19th of July, 1965, you were not born. We were still spending the Ghana pounds and shillings. Okay. okay. So when you say two shillings, the prostitutes were people who were taking so cheap two, ones. Two, 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 two. Yeah, two, that's two. why you, oh, right, you give see. them to actually uh, okay. do that thing with them. So this argument mm. is to regularize. Okay, so the argument is that regularize them. Mm-hmm. Make sure oh, that... decriminalize it. Yes, that's also part of it. Make sure that we can control their sexual activities so that they can openly out of the stigmatization that they mostly suffer um, access healthcare services, which includes right, okay. treatment for STIs and all the other okay. related things, so that they can have access to contraceptives and the other things that can make sure they live longer and they don't infect people. This is where my problem is. Mm-hmm. In 2015, the Ghana AIDS Commission or one of its related bodies told us that the use of contraceptives among the grouping called prostitutes is very high. And sometimes we cannot even uh, wish out the fact that it's actually higher than the normal population not necessarily safer but it's higher than the normal population in this particular case which means there's a certain awareness within that grouping that and again people ought to pay higher for the services of prostitutes if they really want to sleep with them without the contraceptives and that deter people from paying higher for those particular services in this particular case so that is but his argument is that in countries like the Netherlands and other places where yes, it is properly yes. regularized. Mm-hmm. And the other argument is that, you know, master theory of needs. Mm-hmm. They put sex as one of them. Yes. To the people who patronize the services of these people, the understanding is that they need to have their needs met. Since not everybody is married or have legitimate means of quarters in other forms, how do they meet this particular need? So it's a need that ought to be met some way, somehow. Okay, Roman, and that's I think why you're talking too much on this subject. Can we move on to number one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, is the call on the Ghanaians call. to really look at the laws on that. I don't know how the debate is going to go, but maybe it'll Parliament be should pick it up. Yes, yeah, it'll to be see interesting to see how it goes. The Particularly the point where they are allowed to ask people to pay more to have unprotected sex with them. Mm-hmm. That's actually, that exposes them to danger. So if the people are willing to pay more, then the protections that they are offered by using all these contraceptives uh, is completely eliminated. The other now, thing, Malik, one second, and with this story is that there's a lot of abuse that goes on between the pimps and the prostitutes. So mm-hmm. you find out that a lot of these pimps are getting maybe 80% of the earnings and then the 20% is trickling down. Oh. And so they still live in poverty. Because the even state does not sold. protect them. Exactly. It is these pimps that protect it's them. Exactly. And by the way, as an intern, my first story was on the arrest of prostitutes by the Adabraka police. Yeah. Well, 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 Namwan is out now, isn't <laughs> yes, he? So finally, Namwan is out, and I guess his his uh, customers, his his company's customers, will be excited. And Namwan, we are talking about Nanapia Mensa, who is a chief executive of two companies, uh, Brew Marketing Services and Men's Good uh, Limited. These are the two companies that he operated, and he was arrested, and he's facing so many charges now. The circuit court that is hearing his case actually imposed a one billion bail bond on him with five sureties, three of whom were to be justified. Even though his company issued a statement saying that the sureties were prepared and willing to justify and to produce whatever documents that were required by the court in order to satisfy itself that they can raise the bail bond if need be, they were unable to do so. Therefore, his lawyers went back to court and as I explained yesterday, they went back to court with an application asking the court to vary the conditions because they were burdensome. The court uh, presided over by Harriet Akwiti Akwe- Kui decided that, okay, well, the three sureties should not be justified again. On the basis of that, Namwan has gained his freedom, albeit temporary freedom. Himself and his wife, Ruth Tete, and his sister, Benedicta Apia, who, uh, who both... Uh, both are at large, his wife and sister are at large, according to the Daily Guide newspaper. But himself, the three of them are standing, they are facing 13 counts of defrauding by false pretenses, mm-hmm. money laundering, abetment, um, carrying on deposit taking without license, all of that. These are the charges that face. The two companies themselves are also facing uh, quite a number of counts as well, seven counts of defrauding by false pretense and carrying on deposit taking without licenses. 
We know that Namwan on the 26th July pleaded not guilty to all the charges brought against him by the prosecutors. That was after which the bail bond was set and then he's now satisfied that he can go home now. But he's to report to the police every Wednesday, every week. Um, that's what the conditions are. Um, as far right. as number one, and the case is has concerned. been adjourned to third of September. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll be following that as well, Raymond. Now, let me bring you some good news. Now, the Ministry of Education is set to increase tertiary enrollments, and how they're going to do it is pretty simple. They are going to make sure that in the next um, twenty, fifteen years, mm -hmm. as we, uh, ten to fifteen years, what we're going to do is to make sure we virtually increase from the current fifteen point nine percent of the people who move from the senior high schools into the various tertiary institutions and push it to forty percent. How are we going to do this? We are going to build schools. We are going to encourage schools to expand. We are going to make sure that the current infrastructure in the various universities and its allied institutions are also promoted. Again, they are going to promote distance education in a way that's meaningful. My only difficulty is how they are going to strike that against the need to also increase, you know, currently. 29% of the students in the various senior um, tertiary institutions are the ones doing science. Mm -hmm. And 71% is doing um, the arts and the humanities, which has been frowned upon because for a developing country, really, you need, science, you need yeah. science, technology, and development to make sure you prop up your people. Our plan, as far back as the 90s, was to do 60% science, 40% what they call it, humanities. You did science, uh, my very good self, too, but you ended up doing something that's not so scientific. <laughs> but it, let me move on to <laughs> Talk about the amount of money required. 165 million virtually every year to roll out the education sector plan. And by 2030, we should have a proper system which will take up students, train them better, make sure our future is safeguarded with the right human resource. Because promoting one of, science. One of at our the biggest of concerns with um, the free SHS was that with the double track, the number of students that would need to go into the tertiary. Um, Next year, we're expecting. 400,000 to come out. Currently, we have only 174,000 backlog who failed. Okay. So the failed team is going to compete with the free, free SHS people for the same spaces. I mean, I'm not sure the expansion has already happened. It's going to happen over a period of time. What's going to happen next year is urgent. Mm. And I'm sure parents are worried about it. The students are worried about it. And I'm just Everyone is worried about yeah. it. You know what's interesting as well is that 300,000 job, um, jobs we're supposed to be creating yeah. each year if we want to close <laughs> that 10 year that ten mm. year gap. So now we have to build more schools, create more jobs. It's a tough job for it's the government. It's always risk against time for the yes, state. It's, and it's, and it's, if it's, you have it? to build more schools and create more jobs, and more than half of the domestic revenue you raise go into debt, <laughs> debt servicing, then you know that <laughs> it gives you an indication of the scale of problems that you have. Mm. But that is what the debt servicing is projected to be this year. That 51.2% of the total revenue that we are going to raise domestically is going to go into debt servicing. That's what the Institute of Fiscal Studies is projecting. Now, this is an astronomical increase. If you consider the fact that in 2013, only 26.8% of domestic revenue went yeah. into debt services. And we said it was very high, actually. 26.8% mm -hmm. 2013. That jumped to 47.9% in 2016, then dipped slightly to 44.5% in 2017 and 44.3% in 2018. Now, 2019 is raising... Uh, if the projection is to be believed to 51.2%. So that is more than half of total domestic revenue raised in this country going into debt servicing. But that's not even the issue. The bigger issue is that a chunk of this money is going into interest payments alone. So when you have large sums of money which you have raised domestically and it's not going into amortization, you are not paying the principal sums that you have borrowed. You are paying, making interest payments alone. It tells you the scale of problems that you have. And the Gold Street business is saying that previously our governments have always run away from using these payments and always talk about debt to GDP ratio. That does not give you the clearer picture of the scale of borrowing that you have That's and true. how unsustainable it is. Of course, but we remember Dr. Mahmoud Bawumia talking about Ghana in 2016 using 10.2 billion for interest payments alone in that year and comparing six important ministries and saying their budgets put together pale into insignificance compared 
to this interest payments. All right, Malik, thank you very much for that. Uh, moving on swiftly to the online news reviews brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are detivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you're guaranteed extra quality with a fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of over, of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle, go Ghana. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, yenara yedia. And at Zenith Bank, helping you save time is our priority. So you can enjoy three great instant services at any Zenith Bank branch nationwide, as well as at our Ho and Winneba agencies. Number one, instant issuance of Visa and MasterCard debits and prepaid cards. Number two, instant replacement of Visa credit cards. Number three, instant self-generated electronic pins for instantly issued cards. Sounds really good, doesn't it? Make the smart choice. Think speed. Think Zenith. Zenith Bank in your best interest and going straight into the online news review my joy online um says the ashanti regional security council is embarking on an exercise to clamp down on prostitutes and their patrons because it is illegal and a public <laughs> nuisance and um, that's what raymond was, yeah, was so talking we'll, about a little we'll earlier on yeah. also police arrest suspected car snatchers during commissioning of new police station and um, so there was drama in Gomwa, the Gomwa east district um yesterday afternoon and uh, more on that on my journal line bbc.com is reporting nigerian star techno arrested for traffic strip dance so apparently the nigerian musician techno has been arrested for dancing with half naked women in a truck in the commercial capital of um nigeria lagos right well you can check out the bbc um for that we're going to take a few messages and when we come back we will have the news, the BBC News at 7 a.m.